Yes, I had to have him drive me here because it was crazy to drive and yet at the same time I had to meditate. But anyway, all the same, by the time I reached here, I think half of my anointing had already gone, if I can say. <laughs> because I was just confused trying to ask so many things. But until I felt like the Holy Spirit was saying, just calm down, you will make it. I, I, I had to call several times to try to counsel and say, you know, guys, I don't think it's going to work. Uh, but uh, Julia, where is she? I, I've been, okay, she's right there. She, and she told me, I think you will make it. Lastly, I called Madison. And then Madison said, I, I know you will make it. I said, okay, let's trust God. And here I am. Thank you, Rich. God bless you. Thank you for the great work and the team as well and the students. You, you know, when I look around, I see so many young people. I wish I knew this. Then I would have come. I mean, I would have prepared the message concerning uh, the goodness of serving God when you were young. You, you, you know, the Bible says, seek God first. Seek the kingdom of God first. It, it has a lot of meaning. Actually, it's intended to speak to young people. As you are growing up, you know, you, you get so much consumed by so many things um, and you, you find yourself driven. I mean, you, you, you are driven by certain things that you want to pursue in life, but the greatest is to seek first the kingdom of God because in it, there is a great reward. Maybe next time I'll talk about that. The benefits of serving God when you're still young and why does God, I mean, does Jesus caution us to seek God first? There are almost 10 points in that teaching. Uh, but today, I would like to, just to encourage you a little bit, uh, uh, to encourage you just a little bit in a few words about um, um, in your pursuance of seeking the kingdom of God and also serving him. Let's bow our heads and pray. Our heavenly father, we just give you all the glory and all the praise. Thank you, father. Thank you, Lord. I don't take this lightly to stand before your saints and encourage them by your spirit. Now, Holy Spirit, release a timely word for each one so that by the time we end this program they will have been encouraged by your grace i ask through jesus christ amen you know you are blessed just to sit under the teaching of andrew womack you know he's one of the great teachers we have currently in the world one of the great teachers and I'm, I'm speaking the truth. We have so many people who preach the word, but actually their intentions may not be right. We have so many. We are so many of us who preach the word, but when our intentions may not be really to exalt Christ, but to exalt ourselves in one way or the other. But Andrew Womack is one person that um, I have watched for over 18 years. He does not change. Prosperity will not change him. Greatness will not bring pride. He's always there. I've always told this story whenever I come to Karis and to uh, some people that I meet, uh, that uh, the reason I got hooked up with Andrew Womack was uh, there's a time when he invited me to go and, 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 and meet him in Colorado. But I was hesitant to go because I had got um, uh, a similar invitation with a man of God in the, in the U.S. He's a great man of God, indeed great. And, and if I mention the name, uh, you will definitely know him because he's all over on the television networks. Uh, but for some people who, uh, I think I remember the last time here, 
about two years ago, I, I mentioned that name. But these days, I don't want to mention it. <laughs> so I reserve that confidentiality. But anyway, the whole thing was, he invited me, and he, he, he was the first person uh, uh, to invite me to the US. And, and I went in Atlanta, Georgia, and uh, we had certain things to do with him. He wanted to extend his ministry in Africa, and uh, um, I was supposed to be the, like the contact person. And unfortunately, when I was there in that conference, something happened. Not so bad, but there's something that I did not really, you know, I, I couldn't, my spirit could not hook up. Uh, like for me, I believe that all servants of God, that's my belief. And I don't want to impose my belief on you, okay? So that's my belief. And I have, I, I have the right to hold on to my belief. So, so, um, uh, uh, on that day, we, we were several, I mean, we are so many pastors from different areas, especially in America and in Europe. And when this man of God came, it was chaotic. And I was like, what's going on? And they told me, doctors come. I said, who is doctor? So I, 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 and I was waiting for someone to tell me that maybe it's the president or what. Uh, uh, the, uh, at that time, I think it was, um, who was the president back then? It wasn't Barack Obama, no, not yet. It was another thing. I think it was Bush. So, so I was like, maybe Bush, has be, uh, maybe Bush was invited. And, they, and I asked, who is, who is doctor? I said, Papa. And I said, who is Papa? <laughs> I was just inquisitive because I saw guys with guns. And, and, and you know, the whole, the whole thing was, just went into chaos. Guys with guns and, 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 and you, you know. So I was like, okay. I think someone big has come. Until I talked to Shelly, who was the project coordinator, uh, the programs coordinator, and I said, uh, who is doctor? I said, and, and he told me, Papa. And I said, who is Papa? And he said, pastors. <laughs> da, 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 da. I, I, I don't want to mention the name, <laughs> OK? I said, oh, OK. Now, this is not good because this is what I've been preaching against in my country. That servants of God, we are not politicians. We are not, you know, supposed to be what the world, th I mean, how the world takes themselves to be. So because of it, I reserved something in my heart and I said, okay, well, let me finish up this, conf uh, this conference and then the meeting we are scheduled to meet. And after that, I'll go back home. But anyway, during the course of time, I remember they told me, okay, we have to sign and you know, fill in the forms uh, for our partnership. And I told Shelly, please just give me time. Let me go back to Uganda and think through and prayerfully make a right decision. And they said, no, okay. So when I came back here, I said, no, because if I went back and signed the partnership and had him come over, I would have to treat him exactly the way he wants to be treated in the US, and which would be against my ethics. And even pastors around in the Kampala area who knew ab about me, how I've been talking about it, they would say, you were you a hypocrite. You preach one thing and you leave another. So because of it, we canceled. Now, after four years down the road, like three years down the road, Andrew invites me. And I said, no, I'm not going. He invited me for four consecutive times. And I was turning down the invitation until Leland came to my office and said, Habi, he used to call me Habi. He said, Habi, do you know how Andrew treats you? He really loves you, and he wants you to be, I mean, just to go and share some time with him. He loves you, man. And I was like, yeah. Inside my heart, I was like, yes. But I don't want to go and see what I saw in Atlanta, Georgia. Somehow, it will cut off my relationship. It's better he rules his Britain, and I rule my Zimbabwe. That was the famous word of Mugabe. 
rule your Britain, I rule my Zimbabwe. So I would, it's better I stay in Uganda and he's... But anyway, until um, uh, I remember one day again, Andrew came back and he invite, in, invited me again. But this time I said, okay, I'll go. No problem. I'll make up my mind not to be offended in any way. So I made up my mind. I went to Colorado. Um, on my first day, who was at the entrance inviting everybody was Andrew. And I was so shocked. He was invited. I mean, he was welcoming. Sorry, not invited, but welcoming everybody. And, and I'm like, okay. Well, maybe it's a coincidence. <laughs> so I went in and we had the conference. After the conference, we had to go for lunch and then get ourselves ready for the evening conference. Uh, uh, somehow I had forgotten my uh, diary and some things inside the auditorium. And I had to go back to pick them. I found the ashes trying to clean up the whole place, woving and making the seats clean and so on. As I looked around, who was among ashes? Andrew Womack was also cleaning. And I said, this is funny. So anyway, we came back and the following year I went back and Andrew was doing the same thing. But what blew my mind in, uh, uh, in, in, on, on my second journey was when we went for lunch, who was serving guests. It was Andrew Womack along with the team of people. And when I saw that, I spoke my heart and said, I think he's the man of God. And I'm telling you, Andrew, he is what he is, whether he's in Africa, whether he's in Karamoja, whether he's in Colorado, or anywhere in the world. That's what he is. He will move around with everyone. He will welcome everybody. I mean, he is a man who preaches what he is. So you are blessed just to be under that man. I have been a pastor. I started pastoring when I was 18 years. And I've been pastoring now for 29, this year I'm making 29 years pastoring. And you know what? I'm always, um, I, I marvel whenever I see Andrew preaching and how he has presented his life, how he has presented himself. I just marvel at that. How God can give such great grace to men that even money cannot change him. Prosperity cannot change him. Now, some of you just don't know Andrew. Of course, you see him on TV, on screens. That's a quarter of what he is until you attend, you attend his conferences. I have attended some of his conferences. You will see great men from all over the world, men who flew their own jets and packed them. And they will come and sit down under the feet of Andrew Womack. Great men in America, in Australia, in, 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 in Canada. Now I can assure you, if that is one of us, if Andrew was one of us pastors here in Uganda, I'm telling you, we would, <laughs> even to move around, we would have, I don't know how you call it, a fleet of cars just following you and trying to make noise so that people can pass, I mean, people can make way for the great man of God passing. So for us who have been there, and I saw, that's why I can be confident to say that I'm always enthralled by this man of God. You know, I mean, you know what, what we are here, we pastors here in Uganda? We just get a, a, a plot of land, maybe like two acres, and we build some things and some buildings, maybe that kind of building. Oh man, you will be untouchable. <laughs> if you have a building like that here and you're a pastor and it fills people, you are untouchable, unapproachable. What are you talking about? <laughs> Even you are not supposed to look at him. 
you will be questioned why you are looking at him. Don't you know that is the man of God with the anointing? But now I'm talking about Andrew Womack. Only in Colorado, I think he owns more than a hundred and something, or maybe 200 acres, with buildings, massive buildings on. Ministry that brings in, I mean, ministry that has a fleet of trailers. Now, I'm not talking about these local trailers here we see. Now, those, ones, those are trailers, I think, uh, it will take five years, maybe 10 years to reach here for us to start using them. Buses, trucks. And yet the man remains humble enough to know your name, to talk with you, to listen to you. It takes grace. It takes grace. That is the man. And you are blessed to be under him. You are blessed just to sit and hear the uncorruptible word from his mouth. He does not peddle the word for anything. When he talks about giving, it is purely giving. When he talks about grace, it's purely grace. He's not trying to hide something, or maybe to, to hide his character under grace. No. Nope. You know, we can preach grace, but trying to, you know, hide our own skeletons in, in our closets. And we hide ourselves in grace. And we say, you know, God is full of grace. He will forgive every sin. You don't supposed to judge anyone because God is full of grace. But I'm trying to show you that don't touch me. Don't point at me. Don't criticize me. But that's not, that, that's not Andrew. When he talks about grace, it is grace. Purely grace. Amen. So anyway, I think that is something to, uh, 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 to help you look at life. Because, uh, because I see that most of you are young men and women whom God is going to use. And I'm telling you the truth. When God starts to use you, wealth will be inevitable. There is no way you can hinder wealth, prosperity to come. But remember, when wealth and prosperity come, the enemy in you will arise. Money will not only change your wallet, but it will change your lifestyle. The greatest enemy is not the devil. We spend so many time, so many time in our churches binding the devil. <laughs> but, I've, but, but I've discovered that actually, let's spend more time binding ourselves. <laughs> because, because the greatest enemy is you. Your desires. When you are still in lowly places, it's all right. It's okay. But you wait until you reach there. Man. Well, in these few, just few minutes, um, let me talk about the benefits of serving God. Just the benefits. I just want to encourage you, ladies and gentlemen, serve the Lord. I can see that most of you are still young. Um, you are below maybe 40 years. Isn't it? Yeah, most of you have been on 40 years, 30 years, 20 years. I can see some people here. If I can tell, maybe they're in 20s. <clears throat> hmm? So there is great benefits if we don't give up. Now I know that um, the, the good thing for you guys, you are under a great ministry that teaches the word at least you know. But of course, many of us out there, we don't have this privilege of sitting down under unpolluted word. But most cases, we find ourselves taught things that will make us uh, 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 
anxious when we do not see our desires met. But now I want to let you know that uh, serve the Lord. Serve God when things are doing, and when things are good. Serve the Lord. Even when you don't see any way out, just serve the Lord. Keep on serving the Lord. Serve the Lord in the way, I mean, the way God has called you. If you're a pastor, you preach. If you're a teacher, teach. If you're a worshiper, like the lady I found here, she has a great voice. She's really a worshiper. Go ahead and worship the Lord. It doesn't matter how the world look at, looks at you. It doesn't matter whether you don't have what you think the world ought to have. You know, the enemy is so wise. At, uh, at times, the enemy will cause you to meet people that you went with at school, and they will look posh, they will look have, uh, uh, having everything, self-sufficient, and then you will compare yourself with them. And you say, I think I've washed my hands in the blood for nothing. I've washed my hands in the blood for nothing. I have kept purity for nothing. You remember the man who said that? He's called Asaf. When he looked around and he saw how people were living, <clears throat> everything was smooth on their lives, in their lives. And then he said, I think I have washed my hands in the blood for nothing. It is so easy to reach to that moment in time, especially when you begin to compare yourself with others who have made it in life. But let me tell you something. Man's life is not, is not fulfilled because of the things that we'll see. The things that are temporal. Things that we see, houses, cars, um, prosperity, whatever it is, is temporal. They perish with use. But I want you to be rooted in Christ. I want, to, I want you to have that mind set on Christ and give him time. In the fullness of time, he will fulfill what he promised, and he will do it good. He will do it good. There are so many benefits in the Bible of serving God, though we may not see it up, upright, outright, sorry, outright. We may not see it there and there. You know, when, I was, when God had just called me, it took me 15 years before I saw some of the promises God had promised me. God had promised me that I'll fly, I'll go abroad and preach the word. God had promised me that people who fought me will come and bow down before me. People who used to insult me. God told me that I'll forget the days, the former days. God had promised me great things ahead. It took me 15 years just to see a glimpse. And yet, even to see certain things being fulfilled, it has taken me 20, it took me 25 years and others 27 years just to see certain things come to reality. And I say, okay, oh, this is what God was talking about. Oh, this is what God was promising. Amen? Hebrews, let's read in the book of Hebrews. Okay, let's read in the book of Hebrews. I know you know most of these things because you were in the Bible college, but... I just want to encourage you once again in them. Hebrews chapter 6. And verse 10. Now listen to this beautiful scripture. So that it will encourage you. Always, always, whenever you, you pass through hard times or challenging situations. 
chapter 6 and verse 10. Now I'm reading from, okay, I think I'll, let me read it here. God is not unrighteous. I love that. God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have showed toward his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. And let me read it also in, 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 in NIV. God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. In verse 11, we want each of you to show this same diligence to the very end in order to make your hope sure. We do not want you to become lazy but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. That is one of my best scriptures in the Bible. Especially in those early days when God had just called me. I used to read it on and on and on. Though outwardly I was wasting away Outwardly, things weren't working. But I used to look into this scripture and I would see what my future would be. And somehow, by faith, God brought a certain mental picture that used to reside on the inside of me, which helped me to see my end. And do you know your end? As you serve God, as you continue doing what you are doing, I can assure you before Christ that your end is not bad at all. Your end is good. People right now who are laughing, they will laugh no more. Amen. Yes, you, you know, the one who laughs last, laughs best. So right now they can laugh, they can say, how can you spend time instead of going around, I mean, instead of going and do business, you tell me you wake up in the morning and you sit just under the, uh, under the Bible, I mean, you sit to read the Bible the whole day while your friends, while your sisters, while your relatives are going out to work. Don't you see the type of cars they are driving? You know, let them sp say that. But time is coming when God will show the difference between those who seek him first and those who seek other things first. There will be a difference. Now I'm telling you that people will see. Right now they may not see it. And it's good that, 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 they, should not, that they may not see it. So that in later times, they will see it much better. And they'll have no option only to come down, I mean to come and bow down to you and say, we want to receive that God whom you have. You know, Job, uh, in the book of Job, there is, there, there, there is a certain man called Elihu. Elihu, or Elihu, spoke something, but I think it has, it carries a lot of meaning, and it has great uh, uh, depth in it. Let's read it in the book of Job, chapter uh, 36 and verse, 36 and verse 11, in verse 11. Let's see what he said. Now, this is what Elihu said. He said, if they obey and serve him, has God called you? God, God has called so many of us, but how many people have decided to come and sit down just to have what it takes from God? How many people? Few. Why not? Why only few? Because some people, they don't see it as sense. But you are blessed. You are blessed. You know what? You obeyed to come here and to learn so that you may go back and serve him. Now, this is, this is the secret. He says, if they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Wow. Wow. 
How many times have we said that God is not interested in us? I mean, I mean so, so, so let me put it this way. Many times we talk about pleasure in a negative way. God, does, God is not against pleasure. Pleasure is different from having your needs met. Pleasure is having your desires met. You know, there's a difference between your needs being met and your desires being met. Now, we're not talking about evil desires. We have healthy desires. There are times when you need to drive a good car. And God is not against that. No. God wants you to have a nice car. God wants you to fly in a fast, uh, fast class. God wants you to have a mansion. Isaiah says if they obey, if they are willing and obedient, in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19, they shall eat the goodness of the land. Amen? They shall eat the goodness of the land. God is not against you having your desires met. Amen? God, in fact, this is what Paul told Timothy. That tell people who are rich right now to put their, how, how does it say anyway? Uh, not to put their focus on money or on prosperity. I'm, try, I'm trying to, uh, uh, I use, now I'm trying to battle between NIV and King James because I know you use King James. But for me, I basically use NIV. Um, uh, uh, in, in, in King James, I mean in NIV, he says, teach them to trust in the Lord who is able to give them all their desires. Amen? So God is willing and he desires that you may have the best. So there is a difference between your needs being met and your desires being met. When we are still in humble state, we have our needs met. But as we, God prospers us, then we have our desires met. It's up to you to choose and say, I think next month I'm going off for a tour. I'll go and spend some days in Kalangal. I'll go and spend some days in German. Those are desires. Those are desires. Amen. So, so, so uh, uh, Elihu says, if they are willing and serve him, they will spend the rest of their years. The rest of their years. So in other words, it's good that a man may carry the burden while, while he's still young. When you are young, you are going through certain situations. Yes, it's understandable. God will keep certain things away from you purposely to, you know, uh, 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 to have some wisdom built in you. To build certain character. To get the, 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 the heart of wisdom which will be able to keep the magnitude of wealth that God will bring you away. Amen. Amen. So anyway, those are some of the benefits. And I think uh, uh, we are going to stop here, isn't it? Hmm? Four minutes. Okay. Then uh, another thing, that, these are some of the, uh, the, the other benefits. Uh, it's in Exodus. Let's go in Exodus. Exodus 33. Exodus 23, sorry. And 25. I will read King James this time. And you shall serve the Lord your God. And he shall bless thy bread. Bless thy water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. I love that. So you shall serve the Lord. Now, that, that, now listen to what Elihu said. If they will serve him, though right now things are not easy, they may not seem what they, 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 they look to be, but I'm assuring you, the rest of their years will be spent in prosperity and in pleasure. But Moses tells the children of Israel, Excuse me. Tells the children of Israel and say, listen what the Lord is saying. If you will serve him, if you serve the Lord your God, he will bless your bread, he will bless your water, and I think definitely he will bless your air. Why? Because three, three sources of where we get 
diseases, contaminated food, contaminated water, and airborne disease. So most of these, these are the, the three areas where actually most of sicknesses has an inroad into our bodies. Food, water, air. And here God says, you serve me, I'll make sure that while others are suffering, are suffering from uh, food-related illnesses, airborne diseases, waterborne diseases, I'll make sure they don't come near you. Whether you know it or not. And people will be just wondering because you will renew your years like, a, like, a, like an ego. Hallelujah. Glory be given to God. Now this is also a second benefit which we need to hold on. So serve the Lord. In all ways, serve him. Don't look at people. Don't compare yourself with others. You know what you've been called to do. You know what the Lord wants you to do. And I want you to know that the future is bright whether you want it or not. In fact, you don't need even to seek first the things. You don't even to, look, to run and pursue the things. They will pursue you. They will pursue you. I, I'm, I'm, now, I'm a living testimony. I'm a living testimony. Guys, I, I, I spent almost 10 years with one shoe which had several holes. I had, been, I had taken to the cobra like 20 times until it was amorphous. You could not tell whether it was a shoe or something else. And yet, I was constantly on the move preaching the word. I did not compare myself with others, yet my eyes compelled me to look at them and my heart persuaded to compare myself with them. But I used to resist it using the word of God because God had told me that it's better you carry the yoke while you are still young in the book of Lamentation chapter 3. It's better, the man, the, that it's better a man carries the yoke while he's still young so that in the later times he will enjoy the best of the world. He will enjoy the best of what God has for him. People used to look at me and would laugh. They would laugh, literally laugh. Some friends of mine that I went with at school, they used to ask me questions. At home, they used to beg me just, uh, I mean, my, 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 my family friends, uh, sorry, not my family friends, but my brothers, my relatives, they knew that they had chased me away because I was born again. They used to come and say, please, just come and say sorry so they can bring you back home. But I remember the scripture which says, what will a man benefit if he eats the whole world and forfeits his soul? And I said, man, for the sake of Christ, I am willing. And it was good enough. I mean, actually for me, on my side, during those days, we didn't have the kind of gospel we have right now, which is all about, I mean, which is centered on materialism. No, we didn't have that. So it was, I mean, it was a blessing on the other side. So my focus was to serve the Lord, to do his will, regardless of whatever happens. I speak the truth before Christ. I, I don't remember when I prayed to God to bless me. God, bless me, please give me a house. I don't remember that. I don't. But I remember the kind of prayers I used to pray. Lord, use me. Lord, here I am. Lord, strengthen me. But you know what? Ladies and gentlemen, things that I did not pursue, things that I did not fight to get, are finding their way in my life. Amen. Amen. I never thought of building myself a house. And yet, I have been serving God for almost 28 years and still renting. God built me a beautiful house. 
It's a mansion. Amen. Clothes. I don't buy any. I don't. There is, uh, 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 there is a person. I mean, actually, there is uh, recently a few uh, uh, friends in our church uh, who came to me and said, I want to make sure that at least you have a new dress every week. So at least every week I put on a different suit. Now you ask Madison. Yeah, she will tell you. Cars, if I want to buy a Benz, I can. But you know what? There is a time, I mean, at times we reach a certain level of understanding where all things are good but not all things are beneficial. You reach to that level and you say, well, right now I can spend my days in pleasure, but is this what is important? So you, you begin to differentiate what is important and what is not. What is good and what is not important. I don't know whether, I'm, whether I've said it right. <laughs> Amen. So God will raise you until to that level where, whereby you start, you know, to know what is the best. You can differentiate between what is important and what is good. Now when you reach to that level, you own, now you start to live for others and you say, well, I would have got a Benz, but is that what is the best? How about if I use this money to help some people? How about if I use this money to go and do this, to go and, you know, and enlarge the kingdom of God? And as a result, you will find me driving an old car and then you say, Oh, maybe God, God hasn't visited him yet. No, God visited me long time ago. Long time. But now I choose. There are some people who will choose. I decided I chose to live a lowly life like Andrew. <laughs> Andrew, just decide. Andrew has a very old house. Very old. Very old. Very old, I'm, I'm telling you. <laughs> But you know what? Not because he cannot afford, but he chose. And say, well, I think this is enough. You know what? We can go on and on and on. I don't think. <laughs> Let me stop there. God bless you. God bless you. Maybe we'll share more next time. Thank you so much.